this is the time of the deep dives. There were two of them in the past 48 hours. One of them on Baltimore and what's going on with the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, but I placed that one aside for the moment. Talk about the one in the athletic today, about what happened last year or just last month, last several months, what happened for the last season with the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson. And it started with a little blockbuster nugget that before Russ got his exit visas from Seattle, he tried one last gambit to stay, but his demand was that Pete Carroll, the head coach, and John Schneider, the general manager that drafted him, the two guys that drafted him and raised him and let him (laughs) (laughs) cook-ish. Very good. Um, But gave him the shot. He wanted him fired. Now then. He did not comment for the story. A uh, legal representative of him called it fabricated, completely fabricated. He put out a tweet today saying, I love Pete and he was a father figure to me and John believed in me and drafted me as well. I never wanted them fired. All any of us wanted was to win. I'll always have respect for them and love for Seattle. But the one thing, and and I know this is what's going to be discussed and talked about hang your hat on that and you know I I I, he says it's not true we'll have Mike Sando on in hour number three to try and source this best we can and um the thing that that I get hung up on is this office that Russell Wilson was allowed to have in Denver last year because they got into the whole concept of what happened in Denver last year And why, as I tie this all together from the news that Russ wanted Pete and John Schneider gone, he wanted the GM gone. He wanted everybody that's been part of that great success story in Seattle gone and him staying. And then he goes to Denver and he brings in his own, you know, quarterback coach. He brings in his own staff. And and Denver said yes. Yes. And the one thing about they said yes to was an office in the Broncos facility. And they put the office, according to this article, on the second floor where all the executives were. (laughs) And all I can think of is who the hell thought that was a good idea? (laughs) Now, the interesting part about it is what was going on in this office according to this story and, and, and name quotes from players is a lot of good stuff is that Russ put all of his, his ideas for the offense on a grease board on, uh, on the wall and a lot of his positive visualization quotes and thoughts on a wall. And he would have players in there and they would have a shoot the, you know, what session on Tuesdays and his personal coach would chime in as well And, you know, it did lead to a lot of too many cooks, which is fascinating to see that word in this story, that the problem with this office and the way he was conducting his business all in trying to make everything better was too many cooks. So the Broncos allowed Russ to cook in this manner, and it wound up being too many cooks. I found that fascinating. But the fact that they put it spatially on the second floor of this building. So players would have to go up there. And as they quoted a a, a member of the Broncos, unnamed member of the Broncos, that any player that normally would go up to that floor would be afraid they're being called up there to get cut, bring your playbooks. And here's the quarterback saying, bring your playbook because we're going to come up with plays for the playbook in my office on the second floor. And, And somebody was quoted as saying, you know, the open door policy that Russ had, that's great, but his open door should have been his locker. And I, that quote just hit me in the gut. Let me tell you something. When we first started at NFL Game Day Highlights, the highlight show, me, Dion, and Mooch. Dion had just arrived at NFL Network. And, you know, Dion has a reputation that precedes him as primetime, right? Primetime. So... If it's all about primetime, right, exactly. And so he 
the reputation that he had was it's all about him. Okay. Look at me. Look at my clothes. Look at my fancy car. Look at my. And it was the exact opposite. Anybody who played with Dion will tell you what a great teammate he was. And he was exactly that in my time with NFL Network with him. And certainly at the time when we first started, me, Steve Mariucci, and him doing these highlights for this show that I'd love to do with them. And what ended up happening was they put Dion in the middle. Me on the left, Dion in the middle, and Mooch on the edge. And Dion's first comment, first comment, was, I don't like it. Why? Because he was afraid that with him and his personality and me, who's done this before multiple times as a sports center anchor, now doing highlights for NFL Network, he thought the conversation between the two of us would dominate and Mooch would be stuck on the end and lost in the conversation and the broadcast or be made to feel that way on the edge. And I was blown away because, yes, spatial placement means a lot. It means a lot in terms of spoken and unspoken words. And when they allowed Russ to have a, uh, an office on the second floor, an office period, and then an office on the second floor as if he's part of the masthead and him not wanting a coach-player relationship anymore, he wanted a partnership and the coach, new coach Nathaniel Hackett says, I'm all for the partnership, absolutely. And the story also said that Nathaniel Hackett, when he first took the job with Matt LaFleur in Green Bay as the offensive coordinator for the Packers, saw Rodgers push back all the time on LaFleur's ideas for the playbook until they started playing and then got along and then they had a collaboration. And he, it, the uncomfortable nature of what he saw between coach and quarterback, he didn't want for him and Russ, so he was much more malleable to what the quarterback wanted. What a holy heck of a mess. Because what that says unspoken spatially, I'm up here, you're down here. Mm -hmm. I'm up here with the coaches. I'm up here with the, the management. You're down there. Now, apparently, management spoke to Russ at the end of the season, according to this story, about this relationship. And Russ is like, fine, no more office. And wound up spending the last couple of weeks in the locker room. I'm wondering if that was what Jerry Rossberg brought into being when he took over as the interim head coach. And again, how did they play last couple of weeks that season? Much better. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm definitely connecting my own dots here. But to bring it all full circle, the coach that Russ apparently wanted the Seahawks to fire Pete Carroll for, and again, he's denied this, was Sean Payton. Look who he's with now. <laughs> and look who said the first thing he said in a press conference when, or in, in, in a media scrum when he was asked about the office. He's like, I don't know much about that. Okay. But it ain't happening here. Coach-player relationship. Russ wanted to cook his own way, and it wound up being too many cooks in the kitchen. That just blew my mind. Blew my mind. What a, what a holy heck of a mess that clearly was last year. And how I believe, as you, I told you last week, top five storylines going into this offseason, I didn't think I'd get a deep dive to kind of give my just one more, a little bit more credence. I said, what's the Sean Payton Broncos going to look like? That was my one extra storyline going into this offseason. And this deep dive shows me how dysfunctional it was and how he's going to clean it all up and who did Russ want to be hooked up with all along this guy one of those teams on his list that he was going to get traded to right when the Seahawks were like yes hey, no we're going to do that Saints on the list on the list That's right So the Broncos are going to be your new Raiders this no, year? No, they're not. I still need I still I still going to have a, I need to see it. I still have a need to see it, but I hope that Russ has seen that what he did last year in conducting his business with that office and everything else that he set up yeah. 
Do it another way. Do it Sean's way. You wanted him, you got him. Do it his way. And I think, you know, Broncos are going to be better off for it. But that whole deep dive just poof, blew my mind. Yeah, it's he wanted wild. to cook. And then when you got an organization saying, go ahead and cook. Too many chefs. Too many cooks. So crazy. Could you believe that? I saw those yeah, lines. Somebody <laughs> quoted, it's too many cooks. And that is open door policy, great in his office. But his office should have had the open door should be his locker. And that's where he spent a lot of time in the uh, in the final couple weeks of the season. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.